find uh, Mr. Mr. Armier uh, Batman, and uh, he just um, come to us um, and uh, join our discussion today. It's uh, our honor. Thank you, Armier. And uh, yeah. I uh, can uh, yeah you 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 can open your your microphone when when you uh, uh, when you start. And... Okay yeah yeah uh, is it okay? Yeah yeah it's perfect. So uh, great yeah great. And uh, the agenda today is that we uh, will um, discuss a little bit about the uh, deep tech environment uh, in Southeast Asia and in Asia Pacific, and um, we also um, talk deeply about that uh, section. And uh, from the understanding of um, Admir, we will uh, discuss more about the um, uh, ecosystem of Israeli deep tech. And also, uh, he will present to us about VC fund after. And uh, so the agenda will be, uh, I will present a little bit about the deep tech ecosystem and then uh, transfer to Admir. After that, we, um, uh, both of us will uh, take the question and answer uh, section from you guys. So um, let, to start, this is, um, we will have, uh, this program is um, organized by uh, the AI um, base together with uh, Enterprise Island and Pacific uh, Island. And uh, we um, uh, set out the first, uh, the first series will be uh, with four experts in uh, VC industry. Uh, the first of all, which is uh, the last uh, Thursday, is uh, Christian Walter from uh, SDGX Germany. And today we are um, honored to welcome Admir from Shampo uh, Capital Partners. And uh, next week, uh, the week after actually, we will um, uh, welcome Kevin Ryan from Enterprise Island to discuss about um, uh, limited partner. Uh, what is, uh, is it about to you know, put money into the VC fund and also work with the VC fund. And uh, the week after that, uh, the end of this batch, which is uh, with Simon Galvin from uh, Plus Venture from Bahrain, and we discuss about how he um, managed to invest in uh, uh, such a very limited resources, but uh, um, plenty of cash in area like uh, Middle East. And also we uh, learn from his understanding from uh, uh, that area also. So uh, uh, to start today, which is on my presentation, um, I'm Tin Nguyen, as you know, from the community, our community. And uh, I used to be a VC fund manager in um, Ireland, and we used to manage uh, uh, 500 million euros backed by the Central Bank of Europe. Uh, today, uh, when I come back to Vietnam, I organize Vizin Incorporation, um, in which I become the founder and CEO. Uh, my expertise is well managers, and also uh, I focus on uh, strategy building. I used to uh, work in Xinhua University in Beijing. And uh, just a little bit about Vizin, we are an AI-based investment platform. We try to uh, make smart use happen, which is we analyze behaviors uh, of both sides. Uh, SME and also um, investor, and then we can help them with the better deals and also we have them follow on with the relationship. So uh, that is a uh, kind of relevant things to do today, right? And um, my section is about deep tech venture investment in Asia Pacific. About deep tech, uh, I believe there's uh, my fellow investor today, the one who joined, you already uh, know a little bit about uh, deep tech, but uh, in general, it's kind of new concept if we talk about that in uh, Asia Pacific. Um, in other region like America or um, uh, Europe or Israel is very famous of that, but in uh, this region, Asia Pacific is kind of a uh, new thing. So uh, what is that? Uh, deep tech is that Angry Bird game or is it media portal? Uh, in my opinion, it's uh, either, uh, no, it's not an angry bird, not game, not media portal. What we um, talk about when we talk about deep tech, which is um, genetic engineering, 3D printing, uh, autonomous vehicles, artificial intelligence, new materials, or neurotechnology, just couple of things uh, inside of that. And uh, for the case of Israel, and Admir will share later, which is uh, about health tech. And uh, within his portfolio, there's a lot of deep tech uh, focused. And um, um, come back to some factor of deep tech and general tech so that um, the audience can get along with, which is uh, deep tech more focused on scientific discovery and uh, 
it really focuses on uh, knowledge and it takes longer time. If we are a fund manager, it takes uh, us long, longer time to you know, invest in uh, deep tech. And also um, typically it's uh, focused more on the, um, the, the old um, entrepreneurs. They need to you know, like, um, be mature to get involved in those. And typically it's um, about five years when we can you know, harvest for our investment. And um, uh, there's just some particular things that uh, happen in deep tech and we need to you know, get in my, in my um, uh, sharing. I take out some of my experience when working in the um, uh, European Union. Um, for now is uh, the deep tech um, happen and also be um, focused in um, Europe which is because of the wide range of talents that uh, we have, because of the uh, uh, wide range of um, uh, university that can conduct more R&D and also patents that, um, that we got in the European Union, and also the market side. Uh, no one question about the market, which is a big market, which is the um, uh, Europe. And the trend today that we recognize in um, European countries, especially in uh, deep tech, which is uh, autonomous technology, it's be affected um, by some giants like BMW or Audi. Most of them is uh, Germany, and they focus more on that. This is the trend that I recognize alongside um, the years that I work in there. And uh, about the case of America, which is uh, the most patents in the world, and also they got uh, universities, good university like MIT or Stanford, and uh, they got, you know, like uh, fundamental science, which is really um, qualifying in the work. And also they establish a very successful network of any stakeholder that can have the deep tech to um, try, like um, uh, university experts and uh, VC, the fund is there, the money is there, most of the resources is uh, fly to America. So it's a uh, help the deep, deep tech landscape in America fly. And also the focus that I recognize in America these days in AI and life sciences, well, which will be, uh, you know, like be, um, um, uh, focus on the presentation of, um, uh, of Ahmir when he talked about his portfolio in life sciences. And uh, I take some cases from the time that I work in Ireland together with the um, Halo Business Engine Network. We can see that there's a rise of um, med tech and life sciences in the breakdown sector of uh, Halo Business Engine Network. They are the network of uh, 600 angels uh, in Ireland and they got some international chapter and I hope to open the next chapter in Vietnam within this year. Uh, so they focus more on uh, ICT back in the, the 10 years ago, 10 years ago, they focus more on ICT. But uh, now the uh, structure try to sh shift to med tech, life science and engineering manufacturing and also food tech. Food tech is very, uh, is a focus of um, Ireland for now as they are one of uh, the best exporter of pork and um, beef in the, uh, in the union. So um, uh, some of strong assets that uh, we can see from the case of um, um, Ashban, Halo Business Angel Network, they uh, asset from uh, Dukawa, from uh, the chip maker. Like from this uh, slide, we can see that uh, most of the asset that can bring good return to them is come from deep tech. So I must say that uh, it's good to understand that um, we have some assumption that um, in the future, uh, the more company we ship to deep tech, especially in mature um, uh, market, and also Asia Pacific will, uh, will not escape from that uh, reality. And if we, uh, we look at this uh, one, which is a um, deep tech company um, that um, you know, um, distributed in, in the world, so we, we can see that it's uh, shipped more into uh, United Kingdom or Germany and uh, greater China is a bit challenges and also um, uh, Japan, um, but it's not in the Southeast Asia and the Asia Pacific, we're not dominant in this uh, picture. So if we look at this uh, slide, we can see that uh, deep tech and artificial intelligence industry in 2020, uh, with the focus of um, uh, two, 2,400 companies, China is the champions here. 
uh, but also there's uh, not much data about the Southeast Asia, which is uh, compared to the population. They are the very high population, but then uh, uh, about the deep tech and also um, the um, company that can solve bigger problem is not there yet. Uh, in Southeast Asia, we are more focused on um, uh, ICT, the thing uh, like um, uh, media and also um, uh, gains, uh, which creates value, absolutely, but not the, uh, the bigger problem that can be, um, uh, that, that can be done. And so um, this is, should be some characteristic that I can point out from the Asia Pacific uh, deep tech, which is an, uh, we got huge domestic market, absolutely, within Asia Pacific, like uh, Indonesian, like nearly 200 million population and Vietnam, nearly 100 million and alongside uh, Malaysia and Thailand, we got high population, but uh, we cannot make use of that in terms of deep tech yet. This is nascent, it's too early, too early for deep tech industry in Vietnam. So that's why we need more experts from the other side of the world to, uh, to talk about the experience. And then we can learn from that when we invest in deep tech in this region uh, and also outside of this region. We got few deep tech startup. It also because of a long time in the, our ec um, economic system, uh, we do not teach them good enough. And also it's not really the, the, the thing that um, uh, we learn from must, can help us to become deep tech uh, entrepreneurs. It's, uh, it takes a long time to get that. And also we less scientific um, innovation, not yet. Uh, we can accept Singapore or China because they race in the pattern race, but in uh, particularly, mostly the countries in Southeast Asia and Asia Pacific, we do not have much scientific innovation. And um, mostly um, the program is government, uh, governmental led. So the government need to lead that. So that's why uh, we also invite some policy makers to get into this section so that they can get some uh, idea about the, the sharing also. And uh, we got very intellectual property standards. It's like, uh, if you got a patent in Vietnam, it's uneasy to be acceptable in uh, like uh, Singapore and also in uh, anywhere else. So that system make the whole thing more complex. And then uh, not so many entrepreneurs choose to become a deep tech entrepreneurs and so do the uh, VC investor. So if we look at uh, our data from Wizen, currently we uh, serve from more than 400 startup and we hope with the three year, we got one, uh, we got 10,000. And for now we can take our uh, 125 deep tech startup. And alongside with that, we can see the uh, region that they um, uh, distribute. Um, it's like, uh, we can see that it's not uh, there yet. We got Singapore, we got Europe, we're dominant and also Taiwan. Within Southeast Asia, not very much, just from our case of Wizen. And, uh, but we come back to the question, uh, why deep tech? Why we need to invest in, uh, in deep tech uh, recently and learn from um, experts like Art Mir from um, Israel. Uh, it's like with deep tech, we solve critical problems, bigger problems, the problem which can be, um, can be um, occurred by a lot of people, the bigger population. And also from deep tech, we may have uh, disruptive innovation, which we all agree that can lead us to a uh, unicorn uh, exit. Uh, that what Admir can share more with you when uh, uh, he already got two unicorn exit, which is uh, significant. And uh, we need to focus more uh, with deep tech, we can focus more on tailor, uh, talent concentration. So it's like, um, if we can boost, if we understand about deep investment, in terms of VC and also understand how entrepreneur can be done deep tech. We can create a wave that talent can shift to uh, deep tech more than just a normal thing. I know it takes a long time, but it was trying and it will solve the bigger problem for a long time. And um, first mover advantage. I believe that if we invest in uh, deep tech, we can recognize that with their uh, technological barrier, is we'll, we can become the first mover with deep tech also. And we, it can push the national and regional economy with those companies. And valuation and asset is something we always have looked at. 
we, we are uh, fund managers. We always look at asset at the end and also the net return that we can have. So deep tech can win uh, higher, even, you know, we, we need to be more patient anyway. But uh, there's some key thing that I can point out about deep tech. And the next opportunity of deep tech, if we can see, obviously, is uh, medical tech. It can be uh, quantum tech. This can have us in chip maker and also internet of things. Renewable energy, which is a very, is the wave of uh, renewable energy um, investment in Vietnam currently. If you can have a look at, we got the solar power, uh, solar pa panel all over the country. And now they try to import more. One Irish company called um, uh, Mainstream Energy, they invest, um, um, they invest hun hundreds of million US dollars to some project in Vietnam in wind power. And in the future, there will be more in terms of renewable energy within the country and within the region also. And artificial intelligence, uh, we know is all helpful. And robotics and uh, agriculture tech, because we on encounter the challenge of uh, lack of food for all of the population in the world. So agricultural tech is something that uh, is a demand in uh, Southeast Asia currently. And also um, uh, shampoo capital partner of, of Admiro, so uh, focus on food tech and agricultural tech, and he can share later. And uh, autonomous tech and material tech is something that we need to uh, replace. And you can see from the case of uh, Avero, they focus more on uh, carbon fiber when create the, um, uh, the bicycle. So um, that material can bring to us the future. And it's also uh, in the sector of deep tech, and uh, we look at the VC challenges in regional, uh, regional deep tech. As I will see that is uh, about the funding is um, just in my um, experience, it kind of uh, hard to you know, get more funding from limited partner in this region when they do not understand yet. They may heard of it, but also we need to expand and we need to talk much about them. And also uh, about the talent in the region it's also hard for you know like uh, like us to find for the talent and longer runway. Uh, we need to wait more when we invest in uh, in, uh, in uh, deep tech also and intellectual properties that I mentioned, which is a uh, standard, various standard in this area. So it's like uh, also the challenge syndicating. Uh, when we go to the next step, we need to syndicate with more. That's why also uh, we invite Armia today to, to talk uh, about this and then we can expand more and we can uh, talk about the syndication when we got some, you know, forces uh, outside and, you know, within uh, international forces. And uh, we come back to the, um, uh, the job cycle of the, um, uh, of the VC fundraising, invest and grow uh, as it. And also we need to build those things if we want to you know, get more involved into VC and make it in the correct way, especially in deep tech. And uh, the last thing is will be uh, if we can focus on uh, three um, stakeholders, we can, um, we, I suggest that what should be done, should be done is that we, for startup, is a good chance that we um, uh, learn about mature market. Uh, today is about Israel, so that we understand more uh, how they can create that uh, deep tech ecosystem and what we can learn from that. And also for startup, access to, to global accelerator is something really needed. And also uh, we need to um, find what is the specific strain of our startup? For now, we serve a big population. This is one particular strain that we can focus on. Uh, and also we do partnership and suggestion for investor in this region, syndicating is something that and I believe very good to learn more about uh, from other investor in the mature market and also focus more on talent and uh, experience exchange uh, this section is also about experience exchange, which is uh, really valuable. And then co-invest, if possible, it should be great. And also you as an investor, you can put money in some uh, VC fund outside uh, in the you know, like mature market to see what, what they operate and also learn from their, um, their, their uh, practices and uh, experience. And then we can get into um, uh, the time for our deep tech uh, ecosystem to grow. And uh, for policymaker, I believe that education, investment, and also tax. Tax is very important. 
if you want to put more uh, VC and also to, to get more deep tech uh, VC into the region, it's also about tax and education. And uh, experience exchange like today and also reflect on uh, the local needs is something that I can suggest to the policymaker. And uh, okay, so now uh, is uh, the end of my presentation. And uh, please welcome Armir Vedman from Shampoo Capital Partner. Can, can you sh share the screen? Yes, great. Okay. Is it okay like that? One second. Yeah. Is it okay? Uh, I, I can still cannot see. Mm. Yeah, is it okay? And can you uh, share the screen now? Should I? Yeah, please, please. Yeah, please. The stage is yours. Okay, great. So um, now can everybody see? Yeah, we can see. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, I want to, to, to thank you, Tian, first of all, and Wizen for uh, this amazing event. And I think it's, uh, it's great to see that uh, uh, innovation is becoming more and more interesting uh, everywhere in the world. I think uh, the fact that people are more, more and more interested in how innovation works, how uh, you know, we can all together globally create value, I think uh, is a testimony to uh, the world becoming really global. And I think the fact that I'm in Israel, you guys are in uh, Vietnam and other places in uh, Asia Pacific, I think it's amazing. You're doing an amazing job and I wanted first of all to thank you. Um, I thought that uh, I'm going to uh, speak maybe a little bit, first of all, about Israel itself, um, because I'm not sure that um, all the people uh, on the panel are familiar with what's happening here in, in Israel. So I thought maybe I'm going to give you some sort of a background, uh, I would say of a general background about what's happening in Israel. And uh, uh, then we're going to speak a little bit what are the, uh, I would say, the, the comparative advantages of Israel, and then a little bit what I'm, I've been doing, what we're going to be doing, and uh, how we, we, we mix all that together to, to, to do good stuff together. Um, so this is just really my uh, fun presentation, um, but not everything there is going to be relevant, but uh, I, I'll uh, get you through the relevant parts. So Israel, uh, first of all, is the startup nation. Uh, we have a quote here about the CEO of uh, NVIDIA, Chen Sen Huang, who's uh, from Taiwan, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm going to read it out loud to you. I think it's significant. Uh, one of the things I've learned about Israeli companies is that every, everybody wants them. I don't know of any large company in the world today that does not want to be in Israel. Ask the bankers. All the companies wanted Melanox. And look at me, I want. That's what he said a year ago uh, when, uh, when uh, NVIDIA actually finalized the, finalized the deal to acquire Mellanox for 6.9 billion US dollars, which is the second largest exit in Israel's history, just after Mobili, which was uh, acquired by Intel for uh, around 15 billion dollars. Uh, so uh, really, Israel is a very, very vibrant and leading global uh, VC ecosystem. Uh, we're going to see the numbers just afterward, but it's really quite impressive. Um, almost all the major global high-tech companies have got R&D centers in Israel. And um, one point I think I have to delve a little bit into is that many of the disruptive technologies developed in Israel have been derived from the idea from the Israeli Defense Forces from the Israeli Army, Tahab. Now, why is that significant? Because as I'm sure all of you well know, uh, Israel was created in 1948 and has had to deal with a uh, complex security situations since ever since. And, and fortunately we've seen that in the past few weeks, again, in the news, Israel has had to fight again and again and again for its survival. And therefore, it has had to develop the skills necessary to survive. Now, what is interesting is that these skills happen to be entrepreneurial skills. And 
uh, it's really building on, I would say, Jewish tradition over the ages, where uh, you know Jews have been even before the creation of the state of Israel, really, which was a reaction to that. But you know, Jews have been victims of anti-Semitism pretty much the world over uh, for many, many center, centuries and actually millennia. So, you know, to survive in such an environment where there was intolerance, anti-Semitism, persecutions, you had to develop certain skills um, and transportable skills, which is the reason why up to today, Jews are very prominent, I would say in the finance uh, industry and, 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 and others. But one of the most significant skills was really, as I said, the need to survive and therefore to, to survive, you need to be entrepreneurial. So this culture is part really, I would say of Jewish uh, uh, history. So of course he came to Israel and because of Israel history, this is something that got emphasized. Now in the early 1990s, that's already 30 years ago, um, the Israeli government created a program called Yozma, which means, um, uh, what does it, how do you translate Yozma? It's um, uh, innovation. It's not really innovation. It's uh, um, uh, something similar to innovation. I'll remember later, whatever. So in any case, this program really uh, was to, to help military technologies spill over into uh, the civilian economy, right? So because uh, what happens is very spe specific to Israel is because Israel has got a people's army, everybody goes to the army, and the technological units in the army uh, are, are exposed to essentially kids who are 18, 19, 20 years old. So these guys who are very young kids uh, have to actually deal as kids with the, some of the most cutting edge technologies in the world. And the Israeli army needs these guys um, to create the technologies which are going to help Israel survive in the battlefield. So for that purpose, even before that, before 30 years ago, it was actually in the late 70s or early 80s, the, the Israeli army created something, um, a program called Talpios. And uh, whose goal was to integrate all the existing technologies and to prepare youngsters uh, um, to deal with, uh, with um, uh, you know, with these cutting edge technologies and create uh, answers for, the, for the, the problems that Israel and the, the challenges that Israel has to face on the battlefield. So after 10 years into this program, Yozma came and essentially to take this human capital which was already existing and to help it integrate into the workforce and create uh, a technology ecosystem and it worked it worked because from these uh, early beginnings again in the 1980s and the early 1990s uh, uh, quite fast within just a matter of a few years you had great companies which came out uh, one of them being checkpoint already in the 1990s but with others of course and um, uh, money started pouring in uh, into the VC ecosystem in Israel, more and more money, and the results are obvious, right? So, um, you know, we, we, we mentioned here just a few very known, well, very well known cases. So, uh, beyond Checkpoint, you have Waze, everybody uses essentially Waze technology now to, to when you go into you know, your car to go from point A to point B. Mobili, of course, the, 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 which was the, the, large, the, the largest exit, as I mentioned, Melanox, second largest exit, which I mentioned also, uh, Wix, which is, as of now, the, the, the largest Israeli company in terms of capitalization, and uh, very uh, also recent uh, success, uh, uh, which happened last year, where a company where we invested in called Lemonade uh, in their intratech, in their insurance technologies now. Uh, we also have a whole series of uh, new unicorns, including, including Iron Source, SimilarWeb, Monday.com, which is going public for 6.5 billion US dollars, which is going to be the largest Israeli IPO ever. Tabula, Outbrain, Innovis, where we have invested, which was uh, the first um, uh, Israeli company to go to the NASDAQ via SPAC. Itoro and many, many others. Actually, Israel now, which is a small country with 9 million people, just a tenth of Vietnam, right? 
But Israel has got almost as many um, unicorns, unicorn companies as the entire European continent. As hard it is to believe, it's true. And, um, but it's building again on this very, very unique uh, blend of uh, history, of culture, and of the needs of, uh, of Israel and, uh, and, and what has been happening in the country for the past 30 years. So here is a little bit of our numbers. Uh, in terms of capital raised back uh, just six years ago, in 2015, we were around $3.5 billion of capital raised for the Israeli VC ecosystem. This went up uh, progressively in 2020, which is the last uh, full year we have, of course, we, there was just over, for the first time, over 10 billion US dollars invested, which was already amazing. But just for the sake of comparison, this year is even much better because the, the numbers are shooting up. We almost have 140% uh, growth this year. So just in the first five months of the year until the uh, late uh, May, up to two weeks ago, we had around 10.5 billion dollars invested already in the in the VC ecosystem in Israel. That's more than already more than the whole of the year last year. At this rhythm, we're going to actually close the year around 25 billion US dollars invested, which is completely crazy. It's two and a half times uh, what we almost, right? What we had uh, last year, which was a record year. Now, if, but that, this is just a number. So let's look at it in terms of uh, total investments in startups per capita, in other words, as opposed as compared to the population. That the numbers you see are numbers for 2020. Uh, Israel is leading the world by far. Uh, it's 1,175 US dollars invested per startup per capita. That's almost two and a half times more than the United States, which is second. Sweden, which has uh, also quite a relatively vibrant uh, ecosystem, um, but it's a third of Israel. England is um, eight or nine times less. Uh, Switzerland also, which is the same, um, which is the same uh, size uh, as Israel, pretty much almost the exact population, which has a lot of money. It's the global capital of asset management with amazing universities. Right, it's a very good comparable. I come from Switzerland and I grew up in Switzerland. It's an amazing country in many respects, also one of the wealthiest countries in the world. But yet, if you look at total investment in startups per capita, it's almost a tenth uh, uh, of, uh, of Israel. Israel has got almost 10 times more. It's difficult to fathom these numbers. If you go carry on, of course, France, you know, France leading European countries or Germany, here we're talking about almost 20 times more per capita than Germany. So we, there's really actually more money per, uh, going uh, uh, in Israel overall in absolute numbers than there's money going in Germany, which is quite incredible. And uh, if you, uh, just to number, uh, just to give you a few numbers uh, uh, in concerning countries which are closer to you, um, I don't have the updated number to be frank, but I saw that uh, a year ago, just or maybe or it was the numbers maybe for 2019, uh, in Australia, uh, the VC industry was like $500 million or even less than that. So uh, just to understand that really Israel has become um, this really incredible, uh, I would say, um, uh, laboratory of of uh, innovation really for the whole world. Um, so this is just to give you a few numbers about Israel. Uh, these are the, uh, uh, for instance, um, I mentioned that, uh, you know, about the unicorns, the number of unicorns in Israel as opposed to the unicorns uh, in Europe. So you can see here in Israel in 19, 2019, there were 11 unicorns just for the sake of comparison. I'm sorry, uh, uh, in 2020, there were 14 uh, companies and this, there's already more than that this year. And as I mentioned, in Israel, there's as many unicorns in just this little country than in the whole of the European continent, it's more or less the same number. Uh, and really, even that is not completely true because, for instance, if you look at England, which is number two, you have comp two companies, Rapid and Snake, um, which are technically 
uh, English companies, but in reality, they are Israeli uh, led companies. Israeli found the founders are Israeli, so it's not not even this. This even is not really true, and the real difference is even wider than than it appears. Um, just to give you a little bit about what we've done, since we're going to be raising a fund soon, so just a little bit about what we have done. Uh, we started working in 2017. We have invested. So far in 12 investment, the 13th investment is actually happening this month, uh, within two weeks from now. Uh, we have had uh, two unicorns, uh, uh, invest in two companies, uh, which have become unicorns, Lemonade and Innovis. Um, on top of that, six companies, six more companies have made up rounds. We've got three exits altogether, um, plus another one on route to exit. We've got uh, uh, an IRR so far of around 30, gross ROR of around 35%, which is quite impressive. Um, here's a little bit about our portfolio. And I think uh, just to uh, link a bit to what, uh, to what um, uh, Tian said earlier, um, one second. Yeah, somebody is, is, is I, I'll, somebody has a very good comment on the, on the chat but I'll relate to it a little bit later with your, with your uh, authorization. I will, I will just carry on and then, and then relate to what you said. So uh, yeah, so um, just a little bit about, uh, uh, Tian mentioned a lot of deep tech. So I think that uh, really the comparative advantage of Israel is deep tech. Not saying all Israeli successful companies are deep tech companies, that is not true. There are certainly companies which are very successful and are, you cannot be considered to be deep tech. And yet, uh, I would say the most interesting companies uh, are deep tech companies because they are really disrupting their industries, they're disrupting the world, they're creating new stuff, really. That's, that's, and, and, and changing the way, um, uh, you know, people look at uh, how they consume, how they do business, how all kind of things. And I want to go a little bit, uh, say a few words about some of the great, most of the greater companies uh, where we have invested, of course, I would say the most uh, well-known one is Lemonade, uh, which is an intratech company, amazing company, uh, uh, essentially using AI um, to be able to uh, give cheap uh, uh, entrance uh, for people in a very, very short amount of time. And the technology is also uh, so advanced that it allows you to claim and you're to, to make an entrance claim and essentially be paid in most cases within either seconds or minutes, which is incredible. And it's actually growing uh, very, very impressively. Uh, we entered uh, at uh, uh, the, this position at a um, price of $14, exited uh, when it became pub, uh, liquid, and an average price of, uh, price of around 98. So we're quite uh, happy with that. Innovis, um, uh, yeah, Innovis is an amazing, amazing company, that, as I mentioned earlier, which was the first Israeli company to go on the NASDAQ through a SPAC. I mean, they are, Israel is the, large, is the country outside of the United States with the largest amount of company on the NASDAQ. It really depends when. It's the three countries with a lot of companies on the NASDAQ, is China, Israel, and Canada. It depends exactly. Well, sometimes it's more, more Israeli companies, sometimes more Chinese or Canadian companies, but these are the three countries. And, but it was the first company going there to us back. And what is interesting is that it's a LiDAR company. Now, LiDARs have been in existence for probably 50 years or so, but um, it really was not so useful in terms, of, uh, uh, um, in terms of a price point and in terms of what you can do with the, actually with the LiDAR. And uh, thanks to uh, Innovis, we are now in a stage where the autonomous cars, because Autonomous cars needs, of course, safety, right? And safety is is has to do with how the car uh, is able to find to uh, you know to, to to be able to to find itself within it uh, uh, within the road. So so thanks to Innovis and the, this incredible lidar technology, soon there is going to be a completely fully autonomous cars on the roads with this system, allowing you to essentially uh, uh, drive without having to hold the wheel. And simply, uh, this is going to create a huge social and uh, transportational uh, change. And of course, it's going to have wide implications on safety. It's an amazing, amazing company. Um, 
Tian mentioned a lot, uh, talked a lot about uh, life sciences, and we 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 you know we love the whole concept of life science of med tech. It's a part of it's a significant part of our existing portfolio in our new fund that we are creating. At least a quarter of the companies are going to be med tech companies, um, specifically in in what the Israeli Innovation Authority calls bioconvergence, uh, which is really how you merge. Uh, uh, cutting edge technologies with human biology. And we have a few examples of that. Victorious, which is a first, world's first miniature implant for le left arterial monitoring in the heart. It's a chip, it's a computer implanted in the heart. It's quite amazing. Amazing, amazing company, uh, which is, you know, hopefully going to significantly decrease uh, heart failures and heart conditions. Uh, laminate, uh, which is a breakthrough technology improving maturation and patency rates of fistulas. So uh, uh, it, it, it's really some sort of a stamp uh, with a revolutionary concept because generally stands to be stands are internal, and this is uh, actually laminate and VGS, which are sister companies, are creating uh, external stands. In other words, uh, if you have, I'll show you a little bit later when uh, on. Uh, on have a, have a slide on that, but it's really something very, very revolutionary, helping uh, uh, the, to have blood, uh, uh, how do you call it, blood vessels, right? Sorry about that, to have blood vessels uh, kept uh, straight, right? Which, which is, you're gonna, I'm gonna delve a little bit into that, it's very fascinating. Uh, Body Vision also a platform, an amazing platform, unblinding early stage lung cancer diagnostics and treatment. Because uh, uh, unfortunately, lung cancer up to today is really almost 90% fatality rate. It's terrible, terrible stuff. And, uh, but it has a lot to do with the fact that diagnosis is uh, too late. So uh, this system is going to help doctors diagnose lung cancer much earlier, therefore save lives on a massive level. We have invested in a company called White Charge, which is wireless technology, uh, wireless charging technology. At the end of the day, everybody is going to be able to have their own uh, phones being uh, charged without a rope, which is quite an incredible technology, um, etc. I think I'm not, I'm not going to do. Uh, oh, yeah, another company worth mentioning, Xamitrine, is uh, dealing with defense. Um, dealing with defense, and uh, it's actually if some of you are older or they know the 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 the, the movie uh, of the 1980s uh, with uh, with uh, Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger, uh, uh, Predator. It's really if you've seen that, then you know that the whole point there is to have uh, uh, is that the alien was invisible. So that's really. Uh, used to be uh, science fiction. It is not science fiction anymore. Amitron is really creating products which make people invisible. Um, it's actually in work already in the Israeli Defense Forces and American commandos are using that. It's an amazing, amazing common uh, uh, technology which actually uh, we are going to be uh, uh, increasing our position, financial position there and people interested there actually can have access to this amazing company. Um, here is a little bit uh, what we've done uh, as opposed to the funds invested in Israel. That's more, uh, I would say, uh, 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 about the funds. So I'm, I'm going to skip that. This is our team. Uh, part of our team, by the way, is Eyal Waldman, who is the co-founder and former CEO of Melanox, um, this company which I mentioned was acquired a year ago. Um, this is our team. Yeah, this is what we're doing. We're going to be doing deep healthcare technologies. Uh, food tech, agri tech, which we believe uh, is an amazing, amazing, uh, as Tian mentioned, it's really an amazing uh, sector which is deeply needed because population growth. Of course, the global population is growing very fast. We need to feed all these people at a reasonable level and at a Western level in terms of uh, uh, the numbers of calories they intake. So, so this is going doing actually great. Actually, even this morning, I, I went to see an amazing company. We are going to be also dealing with mobility, software, AI, IOI, edtech, education, which I think there's a lot of potential there, and fintech. This is our initial investment process, less uh, uh, relevant for you guys at this stage. Just to mention that we are going to be looking at Series A to Series C company 
in other words, early growth, I would say, company. And of course, doing impact because we want uh, our businesses to change the world, which is the whole amazing stuff about uh, VC. Uh, yeah, we want to we want to use VC to make the world a better place. Uh, to uh, we are going to be uh, committed to the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations, uh, etc. These are, of course, the key terms of our fund, less relevant as as of now. Um, just another, I've got another three minutes, so um, just to give you a little bit. Uh, about a few companies that I mentioned earlier. So Lemonade, of course, is the world's first open source insurance policy. That's very interesting also, because they allow you there to, um, uh, to rewrite uh, to a certain extent, to, uh, to the extent of the, what's possible uh, uh, thanks to regulation. But uh, to the extent that it is possible, you can actually write your own insurance policy, which is amazing. You can get insurance in 90 seconds, as I mentioned. It's sometimes a bit more, a bit less, but it's one to two minutes. It's amazing. Um, and yeah, you can have a different, uh, uh, different uh, sort of types of insurance. So it's, it's an amazing technology. Innovies I mentioned. Um, yeah, uh, deep healthcare. It's, you know, there are great exits already in Israel. It's past Mazor, Valtech, Neuroderm. It's great exit in the industry. Uh, the Israeli government is investing a lot of money and resources into uh, developing the uh, uh, the VC uh, uh, the VC industry. Um, and yeah, if uh, looking now at um, if you're looking now at some of those companies I mentioned, so uh, earlier Vector is an amazing company, as I mentioned, the first first in heart microcomputer, battery free, wireless, digital, miniature. It's amazing, amazing. Uh, Breakthrough technology, body vision, as I mentioned, the revolutionary lung cancer treatment, as I mentioned, with real time imaging, AI navigation. Um, yeah, if anybody was, is interested, also, this all stuff that, that we have access to. Uh, we are going to be doing a lot of food tech and agri tech because, uh, uh, in terms of maturity, uh, that's interesting for us because just a few years ago, I would say that this industry did not exist six, seven, eight years ago, and it started really uh, to become to become interesting for the investors maybe in 2015, 16. And now there are great companies already uh, in Israel growing. Some of them, so one of them, as I mentioned, we're going to be investing in really this month, uh, and it is this company. Um, Aleph Farms, amazing, amazing company, which is developing uh, cultured meat. What does it mean? It means you take a few cells from a cow and you grow it into a steak. It's literally magic. So <laughs> it's incredible. It's real meat. It is not like beyond meat. In, the, in other words, it is not fake meat, which tastes like meat or looks like meat or whatever. No, no, it's real meat, but without a cow. Or without a pig or without anything so you can use that for all mammals really you probably you can use this technology for all mammals and um, and it's it's a fascinating uh, 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 company really um yeah i think that's it i, I hope yeah i think i managed to keep the the time uh, the, the time frame just another sentence to say that uh, um, we are keen on uh, developing a collaboration uh, with Vietnam uh, uh, VC community, investors community, we are going to be able to give access to some of our best deals to our investors and we're raising a fund. And of course, if uh, some of you are interested to take part uh, in either deal by deal investments or uh, having simply in some sort of an investment in a fund, which is going to give you diversified exposure to all the stuff we mentioned, I mentioned, and of course, uh, you are more than welcome to speak with Tien and, uh, and 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 with me, and we'll be happy to do to do the to do the to, to work together. That's it. As of now.
Yeah, thank you very much. It's um, uh, right on time, like the characteristics of uh, Israeli people, right on time. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I, I must say that it's um, within the audiences today is not only uh, Vietnamese, we also got some uh, Singaporean funds and uh, some uh, fund of funds around this area. And uh, we also uh, will um, uh, um, We'll, we'll also uh, discuss uh, deeply because uh, anyway, deep tech is an, uh, a broad sector. And uh, as uh, we all can see that it lead to some bigger problem that we can, uh, you know, like um, uh, need to solve it anyway, like food, you know, enough for all of the population and also um, uh, the, uh, some products, some, um, um, some startup need to, you know, uh, see bigger and also they need to solve bigger problem anyway. For now, within Asia Pacific, we must see that is uh, the problem that we solve is more likely uh, social media or, uh, you know, like uh, games or so entertainment. Uh, I believe it's uh, still good. It's still good uh, whenever there's the demand is good. But anyway, um, maybe it's a time to have a look uh, abroad. And also uh, for now is the time for the um, uh, question and answer. So uh, I would uh, encourage uh, people to, you know, like uh, uh, just uh, asking uh, when, when they, they can unmute and also uh, throw to us some, uh, uh, some question that have me, uh, please. So I can see that we have like, um, uh, VK, uh, Okay, man. Um, okay, then I see. So I, I think some uh, expression from uh, Miss Vang. Uh, she she got uh, study entrepreneurship in Haifa. Uh, so uh, some sharing should be great. Uh, Vang, please. Uh, you still there? Okay, so uh, uh, may, maybe Vang somewhere, I, I will call her later on. So let's see. Uh, we got some question from the um, uh, uh, some one uh, guest, which is uh, um, uh, to, to Admir. Having two unicorns already, uh, what are the key realizations that uh, you have so far toward investing? Uh, you you can unmute. Uh, you you can unmute at me, please. No, nhắc con tâm mở Yeah, now it's working. Yeah, thank Sorry. you. Yeah, no, no, I was on. I, I, I was I was on mute. Okay, yeah. So um, how do you, the, the the really the question is how do you become a unicorn, right? Yeah, uh, I'm going to say another thing, which is a little bit general, but I think it's important. Um, uh, startups, Israeli startups have got an advantage because there is no local market to speak of. Israel is a small country. I mean, I'm not saying it's zero, but it, it, it's, it's not significant, right, in any way. So Israeli entrepreneurs, when they start a startup, any startup, they are not looking to serve the local market because it's not interesting. So I would say that 95% of them as they start, they're looking at the global market. Whereas American uh, startups, often when they start, they're looking at the American market because it's big enough and it's wealthy enough. And then, you know, it goes global, but often they look at American. European startups, again, they're going to look at Europe. Chinese startups start, look mostly at China, right? Israeli startups do not look at Israel, they look at the world. So that, answers part of your question because because they are looking at a wide market a wide very global applicable market then they have who to sell the products and their services to and i think that's the first uh, the first um, you know the, the the first part of the answer is that when you want to look at um, unicorns you really have to look at something that is scalable and that is going to be able to take the world over, really, literally. Uh, I mean, it seems to, it's very, very trivial to say that. I, I, I guess it's obvious for everybody. I haven't discovered anything big, right? But I think it's important to have focus, first of all, on looking at what is the applicable market. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to do even a great company, but the whole applicable market is a billion dollars, it's not going to be possible to create a unicorn, let's face it. So that's the first 
uh, part of the answer, you know, keep your eyes focused and your mind focused on what is the applicable market. The second, of course, is, uh, is the team. Um, and, you know, the, Israel now is blessed with having a significant number of repeat entrepreneurs an amazing, amazing uh, VC ecosystem. And the general ecosystem is already very, very mature and developed. Now, why is that significant? It's significant because people can get the help they need to develop. Not only to develop the technology, because the technology is great, but at the end of the day, it's only a facilitator, right? What makes the difference at the end of the day is not the technology, but what you do with the technology, right? So, so you now have in Israel and around Israel enough people of quality to help you, um, you know, do the sales abroad, which is the reason why over the past few years, Israel has transformed, I would say, from the startup nation, which it was traditionally over the past 25 years, to the scale-up nation. That's something that is completely new and that was not existing. And even five years ago, you couldn't really say that. There were a few exceptions, but as an ecosystem, it wasn't there. And I think that's also to link with what Tian said earlier. You know, he said about uh, uh, the Asia Pacific uh, ecosystem being not mature enough to have deep tech. And it's right because this is a process, it takes time. It's not going to happen in six months or in one year or in two years. In 10 years, yes, possibly everywhere. But you need to have an integration, for instance, between the university and the, and the, and the, and the raw science, right? Uh, together with the, together with the companies, together with the financiers, right? Uh, uh, you need to have enough money around to be able to grow the companies. And also what we've seen, seen over the past six to 12 months in Israel, and this incredible growth I mentioned earlier about, um, uh, you know, about uh, money invested, this, grow, this money, of course, does not go uh, uh, in earlier stages. In other words, you do not see an explosion in the number of deals. It's growing nicely, but there's no explosion. There's no huge increase. What you are seeing on the other hand, and that is very significant, is more and more money coming in at later stages. And now you have all these companies in Israel, which you know Israel was traditionally criticized because the people used to sell the companies too early. But it's not true, it was a bad criticism. Why? Because 10 years ago, there was not enough money and know-how in Israel to grow a company, to, to become a global company. Now, there were exceptions, but as a uh, overall, it was 15 years ago, it was too early, but as years advance, as there's more and more money in the, in the system, you know, in the global VC ecosystem, um, and as there's more and more experience, then people have acquired here the desire, first of all, because once upon a time, didn't people want to do create a global company, said, I don't know how to do that, I'm going to create a company, and then sell it for one, two, or three, or four hundred million dollars, they're wealthy, take uh, myself, uh, you know, as an entrepreneur, maybe 20, 30, 50 million dollars, be happy and live ever after and maybe do and go to the beach. That is not the, the mindset today. The mindset is creating uh, unicorns and not only unicorns, because uni unicorns in Israel is passe. It's, you know, everybody has a unicorn already. We're talking now about creating decacorns, right? $10 billion and upwards. This is the next frontier, right? So, and I can tell you that, uh, uh, for instance, um, uh, uh, Aleph Farms, the company where we're going to be investing now this month, uh, please God, um, we, the goal of the company is to create, uh, was to be one of the three largest uh, meat companies in the world. So we're talking about eventually in 15 years from now, a company which potentially is looking to be worth a couple of hundreds of billion of dollars. This is what they want to achieve. Are they going to achieve it? I don't know. Well, time will tell. But this is where they want to go. I can tell you this morning that I went to see another agri-food company, amazing company. And they told me that the guy, so young CEO, much younger than me, and uh, uh, much more intelligent than me. And he said, you know, I want to create the largest milk dairy company in the world. Uh, so we're not talking anymore about uh, even unicorns. We're talking about you know, potentially companies which are going to be worth tens of billions of dollars and potentially hundreds of billions of dollars and eventually trillions of dollars. In other words, they want to be part of the largest companies in the world. But this is part of a whole development. And you have to find the right people. Uh, you know, it's a small place, Israel, so you need, uh, you need to know the right people. Um, you need to be... Uh, to be cooperative because 
you don't succeed on your own. You need to have uh, good people around you. But if you know how to do that and you have a little bit of luck because you need luck, then I think you can do very well. Hope I answered the question. Perfect, perfect. I, I believe there's uh, tons of insights that people can uh, get from. And uh, as we can see, that's something that we can reflect ourselves in terms of um, uh, Asia Pacific when we too um, are nascent and too, nearly, uh, too early stage. Uh, we still chase for unicorn. As you can see that in Vietnam currently, we get just uh, two unicorn. And, that's uh, great. Yeah, but uh, now- and Hopefully in a few years, you're going to have not two, but 10 and 15 and 20 and 100. It's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, with, with the global health, we uh, we hope that we, we can aim higher also. So uh, let, let's come to uh, the uh, next one. Um, Vaughn, you're still there? Uh, now I believe that you can unmute yourself. Yes, I can. Can you can you hear me? If you can open the video, it should be great. Also, it's up to you. Oh, yeah. So I'm just yes. so <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Um, hi, Amir. Um, my name is Ven. I'm the founder of Osla. It's an educational platform that are uh, supporting mentors and mentees in the scholarship hunting and study in overseas. Um, so I used to get a chance to uh, study entrepreneurship in Israel in 2015. Mm -hmm. Um by the invitations of Israel Embassy. So I was in Israel, I think, for two to three weeks. Um, and at the time, I was running a social enterprise to support people living with disabilities. So um, I was really amazed that um, uh, to witness um, how Israel developed and, um, and run the, the like a startup community, especially for teenagers. I visited some like uh, innovation hub where the teenager make the 3D models, et cetera, with the really high modern technology, not just I imagined about Israel countries before. Um, and also uh, I saw uh, how like agricultures, agricultural uh, technology uh, develop and build Israel countries. Like I, my car just passed through the uh, desert and then next to that was a big, big uh, farm. So you grow like plant on the deserts, etc., and the mm -hmm. quality broader, yeah. Especially at the time, because I run the social enterprise, um, uh, we make the equipment, um, uh, the equipment um, vehicle for the people with disabilities. So I um, I visited a centers for um, people with disabilities in your countries and on of the um, well known and um, modern equipment for those people. Uh, are available in Israel and how like disabled people join the communities and take care. Uh, yeah, so I, it's really amazing. And um, on the flight back to Vietnam, I transit, I transited in Thailand and uh, I got the news that I was now in the Forbes 30 under 30 Vietnam 2016. Um, yeah, so. So kind of like, it's a good luck. Uh, it's a luck for me from Israel. So I think uh, when I ran this um, business, uh, Osla is a new venture. I hope that um, I can raise funds from your fund later to get that luck. It's just huh. kidding. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then, yeah, and uh, yeah, so we, we can see that there's um, uh, in terms of the popularity of Israel in uh, Vietnam and also Asia Pacific, I believe that there's uh, some, uh, um, uh, some, some highlights then. Uh, so it's like uh, we all know about startup nation and also it's like a, a proper way that uh, our government can, you know, uh, try to develop the country because anyway, innovation is something that we really up to. And uh, let's see, we got some uh, question from um, some other people is uh, about the, um, uh, the perception that deep tech is too risky for investor due to long time scales and unknown nature of technology, uh, technical risk. So in your opinion, why deep tech is becoming an increasingly attractive area to build and invest? Uh, so I, I think that, that, that should be, uh, be great to, to have uh, add me opinion then. Yeah, so first of all, the perception that what you said is right, it's correct, I agree. For most investors, it is too risky, it is too long and it is too complicated. And um, uh, I agree with you. Therefore, I don't think that uh, most investors should simply, uh, you know, oh, they, they see something they like and then they just throw money at it. In most cases, it's going to lead 
uh, I would say, to, uh, uh, to losses, right? So this is the reason why there are people like me, but it's not different, fundamentally speaking, than, uh, than any sort of investment or, uh, or uh, any sort of, uh, you, know, I w- I, you know, at the end of the day, uh, if you want to, to, to invest your money properly, uh, you're going to have to do it uh, carefully and professionally. Uh, here I'm talking as an investment advisor, not only as a VC person, right? So um, the difference here is, is, is you're right. It, it, it is very complicated to find the right uh, technologies. I'm not pretending I, I know how to find the right technologies. The world is big, you know. Um, uh, it, it is not easy, I agree. And But why is it becoming increasingly attractive? Because one thing I heard of, couple of years ago from, from a great entrepreneur in Israel, and he, he had a very good, a good uh, definition. He said, you know, once upon the time, up to just a few years ago, um, there used to be, you know, on, on the stock exchanges in the world, there used to be technology stocks, right? Now, technology stocks do not exist anymore because everything is technology, right? Everything is being disrupted. All industries are undergoing incredible changes. New industries are being created. All the industries are being wiped out the face of the earth because they are not providing value anymore. So deep tech is becoming increasingly attractive because there is no alternative to doing that. Because if you're not going to be investing in deep tech, what, what, is, what, is, what are you going to be investing in? In all tech, which is going to disappear in one year or two years or five years from now, you have no choice but investing there. Therefore, uh, innovation, is becoming more and more pervasive everywhere. It is becoming more and more urgent. It is becoming more and more unavoidable. And that's the reason why also Israel is succeeding because we are becoming a, we have become a hub of innovation. But it's not only Israel, it's everywhere where there is innovation, there's going to be success. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, great. I, I believe that uh, gives some insight to the audiences and uh, I must say this um, uh, to the audiences, uh, we are so sorry that is a an, um, uh, kind of advanced knowledge about uh, VC we are on the way to discuss so uh, any questions that uh, we may answer later, uh, which is uh, really specific to your cases, we will answer you later through uh, email or something. So as, uh, for now we, we spend time for you know like a uh, question that more deep and so people can benefit from uh, that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So we, we got here Judy from uh, DG Times, which is an, uh, one of the best magazine from uh, Taiwan. And uh, they uh, they got the good connection with uh, all kind of um, uh, fund managers and also VC and funds, PE, private equity, and also ecosystem in Taiwan. Uh, she got a question here. Can can I hear your voice, Judy? It's kind of long time and uh, it's just truly great to have you here. Judy, still here? Uh, hi, hi, thanks. Uh, hi, Tian. Good evening. Thanks for inviting me. And hello, uh, Amir. Uh, great hi. to meet you. Hi. Um, my question is that um, do you think corporate investors are more suitable for deep tech investing? Since you uh, mentioned about um, the risk for people who do not have um, much of the technical knowledge and um and how does israel foster such a friendly environment for deep tech uh, startups and how did the government help in that way um, yeah great questions uh, thanks for asking so um yeah so it, it, it's you know it's a bit tricky um do I think that corporate investors are more suitable? Yes and no. What do I mean? Yes, in the sense that I think that when you engage in very deep tech uh, companies, they need to have corporate support often, right? Because you want to know that when you develop a technology that it's going to be viable, that there's going to be clients for this technology, right? that um, uh, uh, you're not going to develop something which is maybe amazing on paper, but then nobody has got anything to do with it, right? And therefore, I think it, it is very important to have corporate investors 
um, uh, uh, involved in the, in the process. That's true. But no, in the sense that I think anybody who wants to invest uh, in VC should strive to do it through met to deep tech and, and pretty much all of us in the sense that, as I mentioned before, in my previous and uh, for the previous question, technology has become pervasive. You cannot avoid, if you want to be investing, of course, in VC, not everybody has to invest in VC. But if you want to invest in VC, then you have no choice but going at least partly, but I think significantly in, uh, in uh, deep tech. Now, it doesn't mean you are going to be the person uh, in charge of, 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 of picking up the investment. You have to essentially, at the end of the day, rely on a team. You know, you trust on people. Uh, there is no uh, alternative to that. You need to see people who have shown that they have success, that they know the job, that they understand, and uh, that they've got talent, right? Um, and then you're going to have to bet on them. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, there's not very much you can add beyond that. It's, it's, it's just that I think that um, as a financial investor, everybody uh, who is interested in VC really should be exposed. Another just one point on what you, you wrote uh, also in the chat, how does Israel foster a um, uh, friendly environment for deep tech startups? So, and how does the government help? So uh, there, there is a, uh, something in Israel called the Israeli Innovation Authority, which is the government arm to help uh, uh, companies. They don't only do deep tech, but they mostly do deep tech. They manage between, they have a, up to 1 billion shekels, which is a, roughly uh, $300 million, which they are going to be investing specifically, not only, as I said, but mostly they're going to be investing that specifically, I would say, in very, very high risk companies and therefore often in deep tech companies because they want this technology to spill over and on, on the on i would say on the on the whole ecosystem they want to be taking risks which the private sector uh, may be wary of taking and that's a lot to to explain how the government helps uh, in terms of friendly environments um you know uh, it's a good question. Uh, so I mentioned a few uh, a few uh, few points earlier in terms of all the government programs, in terms of uh, it's not only the programs, it's the tax rebates, uh, you know, uh, giving uh, foreign investors a, a, a you know complete buy on uh, on, on taxes. You can as a foreign investor, you can invest in Israeli startups and essentially be uh, free of tax entirely. Um, there are all kinds of sort of, of ad hoc programs to help uh, these sort of companies, that sort of companies. Um, but uh, to rebound also on, on, a comp on, on another question in the chat, what are the challenges uh, for Israel? And the challenge is that we don't have enough people. Uh, uh, we, there's a significant lack of, uh, of engineers, of even entrepreneurs. It's a small country. And um, more should be done uh, to bring more people into the into the business, including, by the way, people uh, coming from abroad. And I would like to take this, uh, advantage of the situation uh, of, of, of this event to say that if some of you guys actually want to be exposed uh, uh, to the Israeli innovation uh, scene, that I think could be great for everybody because if uh, there are people here who've got uh, engineering skills and who've got uh, or technical tech and technological skills. I think coming to Israel even for a while is amazing because it's a very dynamic and vibrant place and you're going to see a lot of different people and you're going to see uh, uh, what's real innovation all about as opposed to going to many places even in Europe which can be very wealthy and nice but you're not going to see very much innovation there. If you want to see innovation come to Israel. You know, I, uh, uh, yeah, just in a nutshell. I hope I answered your question, Judy. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, You're thank welcome. you, uh, Admir and Judy. And uh, yeah, I believe it's uh, very in insightful. And also, um, uh, thanks for your um, uh, mentions of uh, uh, coming to Israel. I believe that is something after this event, people will, will think of all, all the way. So it's yeah. like, um, 
also get get into uh, some deep tech environment and uh, grow up on that maybe the uh, the good way you know to develop the the deep tech in our home country also so i believe that is um it's good to to learn from that and uh, as we can see that um uh, uh, from from the point of view of taiwan they also try very much to uh, you know like uh, develop in terms of uh, uh chip maker and semiconductors they one of the biggest in the world also and yes. they some in investment in Vietnam also to have a look at that. And uh, in some way, uh, we realize that uh, there should be not only about um, uh, Israel and Vietnam, and uh, also we can connect more the more people and create more value, which is uh, the, the, the true meaning of the events also. Of and we uh, uh, nearly run out of time. So we uh, have one more slot for um, uh, Khan, which is from uh, Block 71 Saigon. If you can, uh, I have some introduction that Block 71 is a program from the Singaporean uh, government and they, they're kind of uh, famous in terms of this area. They are an uh, accelerator and incubator and also uh, they partner with one of the biggest um, industrial part developer, uh, developer in Vietnam. Uh, to create a uh, block 71 Saigon and uh, I uh, let uh, come to the stage so that uh, she can uh, ask the question. Hi, Khan. Uh, hi, hi, hi and uh, hi, Amir. Uh, so, uh, is everyone is hearing me talking? Yes, uh, great. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you. It's, it's great. It's, it's great. And thanks, Judy, for bringing that up as well uh, in the previous questions. So Block 71 is just like ecosystem builder. And right now we also like uh, focusing in deep tech, actually. We agree that this is a long journey. Um, so uh, right now as an ecosystem builder, we are uh, like concerned about like uh, how to build uh, all the stakeholder and make sure that uh, each of the stakeholder have a good connect connection to each other just to create uh, a good environment to know to have a nurturing uh, deep tech uh, startup. So according to you, uh, in, like comparing to XRL, which I believe that there's already a, a complete, a very good uh, environment for all deep tech to uh, keep growing. But Vietnam is just like a, a, like a baby. So, uh, so I would like to know that uh, is there any um, significant stakeholder that you think that we should focus on to uh, creating a good nature, uh, a good a good place for deep tech to grow? And uh, is there any distinction or is there any difference between growing deep tech compared to a non-deep tech? Exactly. That's your questions. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so thanks a lot. Uh, it's very, very insightful questions indeed. Um, I would say like that, first of all, in terms of how do you nurture the deep tech uh, ecosystem and the stakeholders? We, we have to say, first of all, which are these stakeholders? So first of all, I would say, you know, the public sector government, uh, part of the development of the, of, the, of the ecosystem in Israel has to do, as I mentioned, with the Israeli government. So the question is, how do you get, constructively speaking, the Vietnamese uh, government on board? So part of the, what the Israeli innovation system uh, authority does, I just mentioned it beforehand, is to essentially take the risk out for the investors. It's really uh, adding risks uh, to, uh, to the Israeli uh, taxpayer, which some of us would maybe not be so happy about. But by doing that, it is bringing in a lot of money into the, uh, the, um, into the system because people know that they don't share alone the financial burden uh, of, of, of the technology. So, you know, uh, I'm sure that, that if you, that uh, from your accelerator point of view, I'm sure if you, you, you have probably relationships in the government and maybe you could get them uh, to allocate something. I don't know what's the situation in Vietnam. Maybe they have a program like that, I don't know. But certainly uh, they can learn from Israeli programs uh, uh, to integrate uh, between between uh, the um, uh, between the public uh, uh, money essentially and uh, and the private sector that's one thing second thing is because what's deep tech deep tech essentially is based on human capital right on on on, on fundamental research 
So, um, and again, you will, I don't know, so I'm, you, you will tell me uh, what are the research, uh, you know, the, the institutions uh, in Vietnam, which are, which have a real deep international level of excellence. In other words, great places. And in Israel, you have, for instance, the Technion, the Technical uh, University in Haifa. You have the, the Tel Aviv University. You have uh, the Rehovot, uh, Weizmann Institute, places and, and others. And, and places like that are place of academic excellence. Not all of them, but they have, at least within these, these institutions, you have some top of the range uh, researchers. And uh, so, and these places are integrated with the business community. There's a very, very deep relationship. And I think this is the same sort of, of, star, of, of relationship you should strive to develop in Vietnam. So I don't know about Saigon University and other uh, places of higher learning, but to the extent that there are places like that, then you should you know, strive to have the knowledge trickle down from there to the to the to the entrepreneurs and and say you know okay i've got i've got a great idea uh, and i've got here a great uh, uh, you know a great uh, a great science and let's try and make that into a business for instance they would come i just to give you an example of today this morning i mentioned earlier i went to see an amazing company in the dairy industry and they have uh, over around 25 employees and all out of them almost 20 phd's um, you know, and so they're creating, they're creating amazing stuff and very, very cutting edge. So you need to have minds at the end of the day. So you have to, to create this relationship between the money, the minds, and the entrepreneurs, uh, and find a way to, to get this to work together. So I'm trying to, to be as useful as I can. I think that's the most important. And yes, is there any distinction to compare to the non-deep tech startup? Yes, because uh, once it's not deep tech, then the, the role of, the, uh, of universities and research, of course, becomes much less, less significant, right? Uh, any 25-year-olds with a head on his shoulders and a desire to succeed can create uh, maybe a, a, an amazing company, if you, you know? if it is not too much uh, technology involved. But if there is technology involved, then you're going to need probably more than that. You're going to need to have, uh, maybe they can be 25 years old or 28 years old, maybe, but they're going to have to come out of university with very serious uh, knowledge. And again, Israel has this advantage that kids, 18, 19 years old kids go to the army and they experience cutting at the uh, technologies. Maybe there's something to be done within the Vietnamese army. I don't know, but these are just ideas I, uh, uh, I just dropped here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I believe that is such a long way and uh, each of nation got a different adoption. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks, Andy. Thanks, Weezy. And thanks, Amir, for like, having me today. Yeah, With pleasure. You. Yeah, yeah thank, uh, thanks, Khan and uh, Nia. It's like uh, uh, about that, Khan, we can work on that later on. Is, uh, we, we also got some, uh, you know, like hub, uh, what we call a cluster that, that can mm -hmm. uh, you know, buy innovation. And also, uh, if uh, anybody can uh, get more information, it's like uh, uh, one of the best um, uh, gene, um, gene technology lab is uh, in Saigon here with the University of Natural Science. And uh, they're one of the remarkable um, uh, scientists from uh, you know, the U US to, to uh, get here and also run that. So I believe that in the future, we can focus more on deep tech. But the fact is that uh, the key thing that we can uh, mention, which is uh, investment, uh, the more investors understand about this story, uh, we can, you know, like Admir say, we get more the money, the mind, and the uh, entrepreneurs is something that we should do. So uh, we nearly uh, end in the, uh, uh, the the section now. So um, I, I give one one last question and also give uh, information to uh, the audiences. Um, as we have heard within uh, the last week, we uh, uh, Israel got the new um, uh, prime minister, and he's a tech entrepreneur. So it's yes. something really different from uh, the, 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 norm, the norm that we have here. Uh, it's unlikely in Vietnam politicians can come from a tech uh, entrepreneur or something. So I, I must say that it's something very uh, fascinating. 
And uh, what is your comments about that? And what do you think if he's a tech entrepreneur in the future, how can he shape the, and can he boost the economy and also tech entrepreneurship uh, in the future? What do you think? Well, that's that's a very good question. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, uh, but yeah, he actually happened to know one of the seed investors. I'm very close with one of the seed investors in uh, Naftali Bennett's early company, uh, who invested really early, knows him for many years, and uh, we're good friends. And he really said that he's very good in that respect. Um, whether he's going to uh, uh, promote uh, the development of the ecosystem remains to be seen. On paper, he knows all the stuff very well. He's, of course, very well acquainted with the whole ecosystem, with, you know, uh, with the, the with company, with the VC. He's got everything. He's got the right ideas in terms, theoretically speaking, uh, really uh, uh, maybe probably contribute to taking this uh, a step further up. Uh, whether it's going to really happen uh, is, uh, remains to be seen, because one thing I have to say is that one thing that's not working in Israel is politics. Uh, that is not working very well. Uh, Israel is uh, very good for a number of stuff, but in terms of politics, they're not very good, frankly. And this is for another discussion. But I would say that um, you know th this opens uh, this opens, I would say, a window of interest from the government, which the government is, is interested in anyway. So whether it's going to uh, uh, increase that interest. And uh, again, it's difficult to say. I know he, he, he knows about, about a different number of steps which need to be taken to improve and even make the situation even better. Um, but, you know, Israel is a country which is complicated. There's a security situation, all those things. It's difficult to focus on working, especially within the very weird coalition that he created. So I don't know how much resources is going to be uh, able to or willing to invest in that. Um, time will tell, but you know, let's be optimistic. Uh, uh, I think uh, that, that you know it, it's looking good in that respect. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, thank you for the answer. And it's uh, it's something that I believe uh, maybe become some uh, trend in the future when we have more tech entrepreneurs around and maybe more VC and uh, a lot of people in our ecosystem can, you know, like just uh, add more value to the society. So that's the way that politicians should do. That's something that I believe. And uh, um, I believe that uh, after this event, Admir can also join us in some other event and mostly in some uh, advanced uh, knowledge. And also we um, uh, encourage more investor to, you know, get on board to talk with um, Admir and find out more about the opportunity in Israel, because I, I believe is a good chance to uh, uh, jump to a com country that, you know, more developed than us about the uh, deep tech and also we, we hop on the, the, the bandwagon, right? So, um, and also one, um, I believe that in the future we can get more knowledge from Anmir because uh, he, uh, he not only the, the VC um, fund manager, he's also the politician uh, back in the time as I uh, can know. And also he got some very good book about um, uh, Le Fair Mardoff and which is a uh, really, really interesting. And uh, I believe that his understanding and his knowledge will uh, add more value to our community. And also I believe that uh, we should uh, build the relationship also after this event, we, um, we didn't still follow up with you with more events. And also uh, we hope to have uh, Amir as an expert to share more and also um, to um, uh, discuss more about what we can do with the ecosystem in Israel and vice versa. Okay. Great. We are, I'm always happy uh, to collaborate and to deepen the relationship with everybody. And I think we have a lot of to learn uh, on both sides from the other and to enjoy from cooperation. And that's, I want to say, it's also the big difference between politics and uh, the economy. Politics is very bad. It's very, very dirty world. But the economy is about collaboration. It's about working together to create value. Mm. It's about not one at the expense of the other, but one together with the other and working together and making a better world together. And I think for the common benefit of, of, of everybody, I think it's, it's uh, and uh, it's very exciting for me because I'm a bit of a, you know, it's a history freak. Uh, 
and I liked uh, and I read a lot about the Vietnam War and everything. And when you look at your country where we used to be and what is where it is already now, then you've gone a long way. And uh, hopefully uh, you're going to carry on and succeed and, and, and become an amazing place for, for everybody. So just enjoy and I'm happy to take this discussion forward. Uh, I have you come to Israel, maybe I'll come one day to Vietnam or have more, uh, uh, um, uh, more events like that. And I'm at your service. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Anmir. And uh, any question, just throw to me and throw to Wizen. We will distribute. Thank you, everybody, for the good Wonderful. evening. Wonderful. And for you, the great afternoon, Anmir. See you soon. See you Bye. soon. Bye. Take care, anybody. Bye. Thank you.